Okay, today is rope climbing day. Every third day I'm only allowed to climb the rope to go up my stairs. Also, we're doing a bunch of work on the roof, so you might hear a bit of banging throughout this, uh, this vlog. <laughs> Okay guys, today's vlog is gonna be part two of how I went pro. In the last one we talked about Angel Falls and how I made my first contacts with Real TV and sold my first piece of footage. Or I should really say my first story. From there, I went to Africa and I did a two month trip where I did 30 jumps off 12 different objects. When I got home from that trip, I put everything on a, all the footage I got on a VHS tape and sent it to Real TV. They responded with they wanted three stories from that trip. What a lot of people don't realize is that when people license footage, they're not really licensing footage, they're licensing a story. And that footage has to support a story. <laughs> Without a story, there's nothing to license. No one cares about just rad footage. There has to be some kind of story wrapped around what's going on. The main story from that tape that, the, that Real TV is very interested in was my accident where I jumped off a 300 foot waterfall, got an off heading opening to the left, my parachute hit the waterfall, I impacted the cliff, broke my back in three places, all my ribs, left foot, right knee. Um, I was eaten alive by animals for three hours while I waited for rescue. Um, the rescue then took six more hours <clears throat> after that. So that story is what real TV was interested in. And as it turns out, that story is kind of what supported my career for over a decade. The, the producers from Real TV licensed that footage, and then when Real TV ended, those producers then went to other shows. And all of a sudden, I started getting called from shows like Ripley's Believe It or Not, um, World's Wildest Vacations, Fearless, The Human Bird, like all, all these different like documentaries and TV shows that wanted to license that story. Um, the footage was really just something to support a story. The story is the single most important thing in anything when it involves this kind of visual medium, right? So not only is it that you've got great footage to support, but there's gotta be the story. And the story is, is the king, that's everything. So that's basically how I became a professional, was I became a storyteller. And a lot of base jumpers wonder, or you know, people in, in extreme sports or action sports, whatever you wanna call it, they wonder how certain people become professional while others who seem like they may have more skill or they might be a better jumper or a better motocross rider or a better surfer or a better whatever, why aren't they getting the attention or the sponsors or the documentaries or shows made about them? And what it comes down to is it comes down to storytelling. Can they tell a story? Um, Basically, I became a professional because I was capable of turning um, a pretty dark moment in my life into a story that people were interested in listening to. That's basically what it comes down to. I got seriously injured, and an injury, an accident like that normally will end a person's career. It will normally kill a person. And the fact that I didn't die was luck. The, the fact that I didn't get crippled was very lucky. Um, the fact that I recovered was very lucky. But what I did after all of that was not luck. That was me staying determined, me working hard, me twisting something that was a, 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 a very negative moment in my life and, and turning it into something positive. It became the seed, the foundation, the beginning of my entire career. And it's how I started earning a living doing what I absolutely love, which is traveling around the world finding high objects to use for human flight. Um, at the time I worked a job, I was a graphic artist um, doing brochures for insurance companies, which was not something I was passionate about. I didn't like that job. You know, I, I, I was looking for something else, another way to earn a living so that I could continue doing what I loved, doing my passion, which was base jumping, which was flying. Um, and there was something very special about being able to turn you know, my passion into my way of making a living. So anyways, I guess that's the best way I can describe it to you. My career began from a career ending injury, <laughs> which is interesting. And then for the next decade of my life, I ended up licensing that footage and that's what allowed me to go and do all the other jumps that I was, you know, Christ statue, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge, Eiffel Tower, all of that stuff was financed through that footage. 
or I should say that story. Um, but yeah, I guess that's a, the quick answer of how I went pro. Um, I decided that for the end of this, I'm gonna actually do a box opening. I have like four boxes here. I have no idea what's inside of them. And I decided that I need to open them and I might as well show you guys what I'm getting. Let's find out together. <laughs> Let's see what this is. Dun, 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 dun. I'll cut away from myself just so I don't slice myself open. And by the way, if any of you want to, oh no, peanuts. Oh, I hate it when they put peanuts in there. God damn. <laughs> it's so messy. I don't even understand the point of it. <laughs> I hate these things. Ah, oh, God. Okay, there's a box inside of a box. What a waste of just everything. I have any idea what this is. But, anyways, like I was saying, if you guys would like to send me something to open on my vlog, you're more than welcome to. I will put the address to a P.O. box in the description to this video. So, if for some reason you have something you'd like me to open, I will do it on my vlog. What is this? Ooh, my. Oh, that's kind of, oh, that's very cool. This is a human skull carving, carved out of volcanic rock. So on one side, it's a human skull, and then on the other side, it looks like a kind of alien skull. I know, it's very interesting. I know that it's from, I believe it's like 500 years old. I'm actually gonna call Craig and Spencer and find out exactly, but this is very cool. Anyways, that's kind of cool. I like that. <laughs> that's a cool little artifact. Um, let's see what's in here. Looks like a miniature yoga mat. <laughs> I don't have any idea what this could possibly be. Else is in here. Oh, that's what this is. Oh, that's very cool. These are these like, okay. <clears throat> oh, these are cool as hell. How do you get them out of here? Hard to get to though. Okay, so these things are like workout balls. So you basically can put them on your hands and then you slide across the ground. So you do like the, the ab roller, like belly exercises. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and they weigh a lot too. Huh. Very cool. Here you go. These are all your childhood tapes from when you were little. Oh, that's what, oh, okay. I should have known better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's very nice. All right, so let's see what this is. This is... Oh, my. Okay, so... It looks like... Oh, wow, that's made out of... Copper or bronze or something. That's very interesting. Some kind of... That is. <laughs> I'm gonna have to again ask to see what this is because I have no, ooh, I have no idea what it is. But it's pretty cool. It's very heavy, huh? Anyways, so that's that. Oh, and just so you know, <clears throat> this is the camera that I'm shooting with right here. And that is the microphone that I'm using. I think the mic is actually really good. And then this right here is how we hook the mic into the actual GoPro. It just kind of sticks on here. I used, there you go. Very cool.